What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Anti-Gravity Group Podcast. My name is Brayden Carlson. My name is Taylor. My name is Shane, or as you might know me, Postart. My name is Matthew, or you might know me as Macho Matt. And we did it. Put it in the books. Airfest 30 has happened. Everybody, a round of applause. Matt, if you would be so kind as to... <laughs> Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's supposed to be like an applaud sound, by the way. Yeah, for those it's, that don't it's know. a stadium. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's going to be solid yeah. audio right off the bat. People would be like, ah, yeah. yeah. They didn't have an episode for a week, and I'm realizing now Ima- I didn't miss it at all. <laughs> imagine, imagine someone tuning in for the first time. And there's like five <laughs> seconds in, and they're like, yeah, it's about what I thought. I'm going to turn yeah. it off. Yeah, I'm huh. I'm good. Huh. That sounds uh, sounds about right. All right. Well, as you guys know, we just went to Argonia, Kansas for the 30th installment of Airfest. Wait, Taylor, what does that stand for again? Argonia International Rocket Festival. See, I, I always knew it was capitalized, but I never realized that it was like actually an acronym for anything. So now we all know. Huh. Yeah, the um, old so head before, of, uh, cloud busters always make sure and capitalize it. You'll notice. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. That's how I type it too, just because uh, that's I, how I've always I seen capitalize it. it. Um, well, before we get too far into this, we want to say thank you to uh, Corey and Amy, but not just Corey and Amy, everybody at Cloudbusters, everybody that volunteered for making a very smooth Airfest 30. There were so, so many people there, so many killer flights, lots of really cool stuff. And it really just kind of, from our end of the viewpoint, uh, went down without a hitch. I'm sure internally there was some crises and some fires, both figurative and literal, to put out. But uh, it was great. So, Matt, round of applause for (laughs) the (laughs) Cloudbusters. Dang it, I can't For making Airfest phenomenal. Um, But interestingly enough, both Macho Matt and Postart have some big news, so... Taylor and I are going to sit to the wayside here for a while and let them explain what went down for them at Airfest 30. Because it's a pretty big one for both of them. Who wants to go first? Pasta. I think Matt should. Dang it. Okay, that's about what I I expected. This this was Matt's big don't call it a comeback tour. Um, (laughs) It's true. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. Matt, tell us. Tell us, first of all, the big elephant in the room is, did you finish your three-inch Punisher? Because people have been on edge. You didn't even tell us if it was actually done. Yeah. You're right. There were, I mean, I think Taylor kind of knew a little bit about it. But, um, yeah, I actually did complete the three-inch Punisher. Round, round of applause to myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, I yeah, completed my three-inch Punisher. Um, and it looks and good. It looks it really, really good. good. Whoa, really good. Wow, two really goods yeah. and good. All right. But I think the Taylor, good even. Is, the Taylor Good is, yeah. is pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I uh, was trying to figure out what paint scheme did I want to, to go with because that, to me, is the most important part of the entire rocket is to make sure that <laughs> it looks good. So um, I really was trying to steer away from roller coaster themes, but I just – I have this coffee mug that has Mamba <laughs> on it. And I was like, oh, you know, this seems like a pretty cool color combination, color scheme. So anyways, I ended up doing a satin magenta and um, with a, uh, a gloss black like background to it. And I, I made uh, my, my girlfriend uh, gave me the idea of using fishnets um, to make a, uh, a pattern, like a scale like pattern on it. So did that and turned out pretty good your your mamba sticker was pretty awesome um was being was, the key it was word yeah. there we learned yeah. that if you push the uh stickers that postcard and i make like past mock ish without clearing over them it just kind of rips the laminate off the top somehow yeah. it only took the black off which is pretty crazy but yeah that yeah. was uh, if pretty surprising if you're cool with it we'll throw the picture of your rocket in i'll just steal it off facebook and overlay it here for the people who yeah. are watching on youtube to see that's not yeah no I'm, uh, yeah I'm, I'm definitely good with that so yeah it went went well i kind of saved it for a long time should i tell them about my like all of my flights are just yeah just go w- for it okay yeah um i'll try to quickly go through it 
Uh, first flight was well, Mr. Wait, Jonathan. Hold on. Let's, oh, let's back up a second. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. Are you gonna get to Mamba and how high it went? I was gonna say yeah, you can't yeah. leave people on the. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sh- or Pardon should me. I do? This that. man knows what he's doing. He's a professional podcaster. <laughs> Listen to his audio today. We <laughs> finally got him <laughs> a mic arm, so his audio is consistent and sounds good. That's okay. Glad glad to hear that. Round of applause for yourself for having the mic arm. <laughs> it's going downhill yeah the audio is just <laughs> oh wow, so close uh so first flight was friday um we got there and then jonathan i don't know jonathan's last name but jonathan um gabery gabery uh i so i brought all of my rockets with me um and yeah he was like hey you want to uh drag race the punisher or not the punisher the um the many mags uh, cause he brought his bang mini mag and I brought my monster mini mag. And since two people in this group didn't build their mini mag and one of them didn't rebuild theirs, uh, <laughs> I had nobody else to drag race against. So, you know, um, so yeah, we, uh, I, <laughs> Matt builds his, his three inch punisher and all of a sudden he's throwing shots. Around. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, I'm... So some people are slacking <laughs> building rockets. <laughs> Basically, uh, and so I flew it on, I think it was an I-357. Um, and so, yeah, we drag raced that. Taylor hooked me up with uh, mm, speedier speedier charges to make it. A winner's um, igniter. A, okay, a winner's <laughs> igniter. There, there, that's the technical term. And I won. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a good flight. And then um, I flew my... Uh, one point six inch, one point six inch diameter intimidator, wildman intimidator, on a G seventy seven, I think red line. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it, uh, I went and recovered it fine. But then when I got to the rocket, it was missing the the payload in the nose cone section. And so I was like, oh, that's not good. It basically broke right off at the coupler. Um, and so I was like, okay, it couldn't be too far away from this area. So I just bit, did like a big spiral around the area, and it took me about 20 minutes or so. And about that time, I saw one of your flights, Braden, um, when you when I get to that. And then um, I uh, eventually found the nose cone buried into the into the um, the field. So I found it. That was great. And then, yeah, that was Friday. And then Saturday was the big day. And then I was waiting for things to happen. And then I was going to launch my mamba that day but um i was like well i want to launch my um magnum rocket so that's sort of like my sentimental high power rocket and i was like oh i'll it's launch that one first yeah it's the og for me and uh and i already had a motor ready to go so i took the electronics out or i took the tracker out of my mamba put it in the magnum and then um flew that at like five o'clock i think I don't know what I was thinking. And then uh, that was basically all I had time to fly on Saturday. Um, and then Sunday rolled around. I launched the Mamba uh, on a J800. Went 8,200 feet. Um, went well. Wh- and then, which is... Um, <laughs> how? What would be a other measurement for that? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> you know roughly 40 Mamba lift hill heights or maybe like 1.8. Mamba track lengths, maybe <laughs> maybe one point five Mamba track length. It depends on what what seems to make more sense to you. So, um, okay, thank you. Yeah, and the next thing I could do, you know, height requirements. Maybe that's another, you know. Anyway, um, so and then so that worked well. And then I launched uh, the most exciting rocket of the weekend. I think for everyone was the Mozzie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were all on edge waiting for that one, dude. <laughs> on a G25 White Lightning. Or wait, was it? I think it was G25. Yeah. Um, and it, it had a pretty uh, crazy, not a not a Kato or Shred, but it. I think that it looked, looking at Shane's pictures, that was pretty awesome. The nose kind of looked like it was coming off right at the top of the, of the launch rod. Um, well, it's like I, it's coming off as the motor lights like it yeah had a tiny I, amount of blow by or just fired the ejection charge immediately yeah, yeah. it was hmm. i'm not sure what happened there but it basically did a bunch of corkscrews in the air and then luckily didn't hit and hurt anybody and then it uh 
landed and that was right at the time we started doing um, volunteering at that time and then on monday i launched the screaming eagle um which went i think it was three thousand yeah, oh, always like yeah like three thousand seven hundred feet roughly and yeah it went well the end <laughs> for reference that screaming eagle is uh mystic Locked. buzz and uh yeah. the magnum rocket didn't you just like make that from a shipping tube or something like that yeah it was technically yeah. it was a it was a tube that was used at my old house i had uh i installed a handrail and like there was this thick cardboard tube that was protecting some metal component and then that's yeah that's what we ended up using f- from it's a tank all right well t- wait so you flew five rockets i think six Maybe and five. uh also for reference mamba is his the three, wild inch, man, punisher. three inch punisher yeah. yeah which is a Hyper coaster at uh, Worlds of Fun in Kansas City, Missouri. Barely, we should add. <laughs> Barely, it's it's, it's a legit. <laughs> Built in 1998 by Morgan Manufacturing. Blah blah. blah. And what's the lift hill height again? 205 feet. Okay, Speed 75 miles per hour. Overall track length. Uh, I think it's 5,800 feet. And the maximum lateral G forces. <laughs> <laughs> if you could 45 it's, holy how many that's when it how many hits the wall hills? <laughs> i think 13 about 13 oh, oh right that's <laughs> sit up sit up right hold on yeah. tight because mamba is about, is about to, to go on strike <laughs> all right <laughs> that's right well, ladies and gentlemen macho matt showing up flying yeah. a bunch of rockets and actually getting them all back yeah. actually flying Flying the most out of all of us. Yeah, yeah. true. Why, why was it that the the uh, wow <laughs> the audience just sort of like trickled in? It was just kind of yeah. like they were like know, kind that, of okay with it. That sound bite's like he, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you sure you want applause? <laughs> yeah. It's like the guy really trying to start the clap. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Come on, guys, let's go. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> Well, thank you. All right. Well, Postart, why don't you tell the fine folks what you had going on at Airfest? Third. I uh, I did not fly <laughs> nearly as many rockets as Matt, but I did fly a very important one. Uh, my 5-inch Wildman Punisher on an Aerotech M1550 for my level 3 cert flight, and it was a success. I got my level 3. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Yeah. That's right, folks. Now there's only one member of the anti gravity group that's not level three certified. But he's been he's logged back into his rocketry account. I don't know where I pulled that uh <laughs> that from, but you know. He's back in. Matt had I'm a really good time. S- yeah. No thirty eight forties were lost. That I don't even know why you're that sad about it. You didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> Um, but uh, he's he's in. So what's sounds like maybe we're doing level three next year, Matt. Yeah, that's what's uh, that's what's cooking in the kitchen right now. I'm thinking, thinking, <laughs> thinking about. Uh, yeah, I think a demon five five inch demon. Yeah, what I what I want to call the redeeming demon, the redeeming demon, or something like that. I'm telling you, R E dash D E A M I N. We'll go with Posh that. What, what, the what, if you just paint, what if you just painted it like a 3840 Dr. Rocket case? <laughs> oh. I don't think you'll be able to beat the one that has the custom label, though. Yeah. So yeah. Like trying. That's, that that's definitely good. pretty solid. Yeah. What if you just do R E dash D E M O N, the Redemon? Whoa! I feel like that's better. That I I would have to. How do you spell redeem? Oh yeah, that is R E D E E M, right? No redeem. It's uh, oh yeah. E- <laughs> I thought you meant redeeming. Yeah. Um. Is it R E P H? You could do the two E's, but do O N. Be a little cheeky with it. That. I think that could be a, a good, yeah, I, I could do that. Um, well, 
Yeah. Anyway, welcome Postar to the level three club. Uh, what are you gonna, <laughs> What are you going to do next? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Any big I, or crazy uh, or absurd flights that you have uh, planned from immediately going off your level three? Possibly. I think. Um, I think I'm going to be sanding all of the paint off the fins of my five inch Punisher to do a carbon layup for an O thirty four hundred. Just like everybody else who's ever got their level three. Just yeah, nice small wow. celebration flight. Go straight from the five grain seventy five to the ninety eight six XLO motor. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Wow! Shout out Great Western Buildings for <laughs> making yep. that one possible. Yeah. Yep. At least it's not a sentimental rocket or anything. <laughs> hey, there's no sentimental rockets. There's no sentimental hardware. All right, everything gets mm. flown, and if it dies, it dies. It's yeah, but if AGG it dies, Creed. I cry. So you know. <laughs> no, no, no. If it dies, then, you cries. Yeah, no, here I got it. If he dies, you cry. Then you go and buy more <laughs> and a Punisher a five. See, yeah, that's and what I know. Six XL case. No, I yeah. think according to Matt, the rule is if you borrow the case, then it's not yours, so you don't <laughs> no. release it. Yeah, I think I'll pull that trick. Okay. I like well, the they, idea of that yeah. one. Okay. You ain't borrowing S from me, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna matter though, because it's gonna go great. Yeah, it's gonna be perfect. That's right. Yep. That's right. It's not that. I mean, it's fast, but it's not that crazy. What is it? Oh, yeah. it's like Mach. What? It's two point like two point five, two point six. Oh, well, don't get it. It's pretty fast. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. <laughs> wow. Huh? Yeah, actually, that's uh, <laughs> it's pretty well, fast. When you put it yeah. like that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. How many seconds is it above Mach two? Just curious. Uh, I actually haven't looked at that. I'll have to check. Oh, probably, it's probably best not to. Just for <laughs> probably <laughs> like three. Just, just yeah, waiting for. You probably shouldn't look at that. <laughs> Quite uh, a while. That's, that's what the carbon fiber's for. Exactly. Maybe you should do it. it. A couple layers underneath your full layer, um, and alternate what direction the weave's going. Yeah. The good news is I just bought a ton of carbon fiber. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Taylor had a really cool flight in his five inch Punisher on a CTI N fifty six hundred. Oh, <laughs> wait, no, <laughs> no, he didn't actually. <laughs> you didn't have your five inch Punisher there, did you? No, because he didn't uh, buy the N fifty six hundred that he could have bought when I was at LDRS in New York. Man, these are all good points. <laughs> So uh, um, just a reminder that Taylor's looking for an N5600 if anyone happens to have one kicking around. Or know someone that has one that you could uh, convince to get rid of. Stranger things have happened. I said I wanted an unbuilt Airx kit and found one because of this podcast. So, uh, you know, speak it into um, existence. Yeah, I built the rocket specifically with that motor in mind. Not that I didn't want a 5-inch Punisher for other reasons, but um, that was what i wanted so yeah. he had it in his grasp and squandered it i was trying to be responsible and not buy an n5600 when i had no well money. that's where you went wrong right <laughs> don't be I responsible saw, i saw an n1560 <laughs> and was like wow i can't really afford to buy that but when am i going to find another one so i bought it with a credit card <laughs> I mean, it's corona delayed, decision. Delayed My credit card at the time was already glowing. <laughs> <laughs> with with a high credit score? Yeah, we're going no, not score. <laughs> not score. <laughs> Balance. You had, uh. you had the out, though. You showed some crazy restraint, because if I had the, the bailout coming that you had, Man, I would have been getting yeah. just ferociously reckless. <laughs> <laughs> I already do pre-spend money. I don't have the only thing is I'm not selling a house that's going to save me yeah. from it. Uh, you can check out merch from RockyVlogs.com. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> have you considered joining Patreon at Patreon.com/RockyVlogs? Uh, anyway, should we actually let Taylor explain his not Punisher Five and 5600 flights? <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, well, so this was an interest a first for me at Airfest because uh, Friday I did not fly anything, um, and actually and most of Saturday too. He was having yeah. a meltdown. He was not so happy. <laughs> I was having an existential crisis a little bit, but um, I was trying to get a. But we had a lot of overcast, and um, I thought that was a good opportunity to try to get a bunch of prep done on the 12 inch punisher um and so i really pulled reeled it in on that and and got the electronics all situated and um tried to make it easy for us the next day uh, especially since Braden played with the lock boys that evening um which by the way if anybody has any video of that do not send it to me and <laughs> if you could delete it that would be awesome <laughs> I'll tell that story in a minute, but you know, it's part of the airfest uh, lore. But and so yeah, anyway, sun's starting to go down. Braden's waiting for his his star performance and uh <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have time to repack the C9 before we left, so uh me and Postart were looking at it and one thing led to another and we're re- repacking a 28-foot parachute as the sun's going down. So that's sort of how we finished Friday. Um, and then Saturday, there was a, some clouds in the morning. And uh, I it didn't end up flying a rocket until about 5 o'clock. And I put my Sumo up on a J350, the fiberglass Sumo copy, which, as always, goes relentlessly hard. And um, perfect flight. And then the next day... Uh, Let's see what... It, oh, I flew my 3-inch Punisher on a K375 that I paid full price for, but it's one of the only <laughs> motors that I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting tidbit, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just... I bought it at the launch. I don't normally do that. Mm. Just rolled it's up kinda... and said, give me a K375 because I love that motor. We're you're getting to a point where that's like the only option at this point because you can't order them and you kind of just we're back to the world of just showing up and hoping vendors have something for you for the time being. True, and we're almost to a point where they don't. <laughs> right, which is why I always advise buying like dozens and dozens of motors at a time, like specifically <laughs> old ones. Yeah. Um, there is something kind of satisfying about going into the the trailers though and like looking at all the motors available and it does feel like, like it's just all right there. therapy yeah, yeah it, it feels really a is. lot it feels a lot better than getting a package in the mail um dude yeah. i know and it is it's almost like when you talk to people that are like oh, i'm flying this today and you're like what are you flying on they're like i don't know yet i'm gonna go see what they got i'm like damn <laughs> i want to live that wild and crazy life sometimes shit in a candy <laughs> store um. Yeah, and the money doesn't feel as real when you're standing in there at a rocket launch. <laughs> it just, it just yeah. goes. It just goes. <laughs> yeah. Before you when know, I'm sitting you're at my computer, I can think about it a lot more. Yeah. You go yeah. watch as that as the payment goes through. Instead, you just, yeah, just hand over the old card. <laughs> <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't ah, help why that do they that? they keep announcing it, you know, hey, go support the vendors, go support the vendors. Okay, got to go. And well, yeah, you got to. This is exactly. Good, it's a yeah. good thing. Well, I guess I like, respect yeah. it would be rude not to at this it point. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, you don't want to yeah. disrespect anybody out there. So, of no, course. Right. Yeah, and I don't mean um, that in any mean way or anything. But, uh, yeah, so I think that's that's it for you, right? Shall we move uh, on to no, me? No, I uh, I uh, Monday morning, I was convinced that I should oh, yeah. oh, fly yeah. my Little John. So I had four inch composite warehouse Little John. Right. I put up on a AMW J480 Blue Baboon, which always goes hard. Love Blue yeah, Baboon. It was sick. I've got a couple Blue Baboon motors that need to get burned. It just goes so hard. Wait, do you, Blue Baboon or Blue Thunder? Which one are you taking? Mm, that's tough. I probably still go Blue Thunder. That makes sense. You're kind of a loyalist these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> these days. I like the big flat prof- thrust profile of Blue Baboon. 
but it's like I wouldn't take every blue baboon motor. I would probably take every blue thunder motor. <laughs> Interesting. There's some that I'm just like, eh, but uh all right, well, um I decided to ask Taylor politely to pull my my Arconia rocket out of storage because Eric Beavers from Great Western Buildings offered me an M2225 Super White Lightning. And uh, I was going to bring my 5-inch Punisher or my 4-inch Competitor. But then I was like, you know what? Let's bust out the big V2 again because that thing just kicks A. And uh, it's been sitting <laughs> at Taylor's house doing nothing since we flew to Midwest Power. And um, it's had a good run. It's flown on two M's and an N. It was, well, or a really big M. Uh, but either way, a four grain M is like the least potent motor it's ever flown on. So I was like, that'll be good. You know, it's going to go like 6,500 feet and be nice and easy. And I think just works. So naturally, uh, everything went perfect except for where I Braden memed it just like with a bunch of other rockets. And upon landing, despite <laughs> it coming in very slow into very soft mud, it snapped two of the four fins clean off <laughs> and just demolish the fillets well, i shouldn't say clean off because that would be too easy to repair it snapped them loose of the motor too and there's some nice big carbon fiber injected fillets hanging on the inside of the tail yeah. cone that i'm if, going to have to cut up and demolish to get them out if you didn't have the in, the injected carbon fiber uh they probably would have came clean out dude and this is <laughs> it, the it tried its best this is the third rocket now that I'm like, I'm not doing internal fillets anymore. Like, I've flown a rocket with surface mounted fins and just big fillets to over Mach 2 successfully now. I think I am anti internal fillets at this point. Whether you inject them or you pull the whole motor mount assembly out and pour them in, whatever. I'm kind of starting to think I hate it on rockets that are at a serious risk of breaking the fins on landing let's say v2s to red maxes fat boys what else do i have honest I -I. yeah irises all the things <laughs> i you, like the sumo you want to build yeah that's for sure not <laughs> getting them <laughs> i'm gonna just let the fins snap off and keep a few extra cans of paint that matches the color and just accept that i'm gonna have to be doing this so uh yeah and the now i track it that's in the works. Oh yeah, that was oh, that was gonna, gonna for sure break all yeah. of the fins. I called my dad <laughs> and I was like, "We should maybe consider just like making the bolt the fins bolt in, so we can just put new mm -hmm. ones in after every flight when it inevitably snaps them off." But that is another discussion. Now that I have my hands on a beautiful six inch public missiles no cone no cone i can't speak. thank you <laughs> to our friends over at lock precision public missiles for bringing the no, that together the no cone the no cone no that's what you have oh oh, oh. <laughs> brandon i think i've got a video of your v2 landing oh do you yeah it took oh. a bit of a tumble i was out in the yeah. field looking for my intimidator stuff and it sword. really uh it's like when you're running through a field and your feet go in a gopher hole and all that forward momentum just snaps your leg. You know, we've all been there, of course. <laughs> That's basically what happened is it got just like a nice swing on the downshift and just uh, <laughs> caught two fins in the mud and nice whiz banged them out of there. It just, so. it just exploded the fillets off. <laughs> and yeah, I was so upset because I was just like, you know what? I'm going to bring old Snooky Bootsy the 8-inch V2 back home because it's kind of the perfect rocket for flying at um, Lucerne now because the waiver's only 7,000. I was like, so I can still fly big L's and M's, keep it under the waiver. I was going to get a Cert 3 2XL and just land the thing at like 8 FPS because the dry lake bed will snap it off, but it'll be fine in Argonia because the ground's always soft. And Guess what? Welcome to the Needs of Fin Replace Club, Schnooky Bootsy, the 8-inch V2. And that one's going to be... I'm trying to decide if it's going to be worse or better. Because I'm like, I can maybe just slit the tail cone right beneath the fins and kind of force them out. Whereas with the other rockets, I'm going to just have to cut like big holes in the tube so I can sneak those out. But uh, so the V2 might be easier. But I'm starting to think that maybe... It's going to get a 
at least semi tip to tip layup of carbon fiber this time because I just ordered a ton of carbon fiber, so I'm ready to just go absolutely <laughs> wild with it. Um, says carbon fiber era. Yeah, dude. <laughs> After <laughs> nice. so I've um those on Patreon will know that I've been working on the uh, the N one thousand project that's flying here in a couple weeks at balls. And the rocket with fillets, like the fin can with fins and fillets, weighs like three pounds. It's a four inch rocket. I'm like, this is crazy. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I'm in my carbon fiber era. Um, and I'm a carbon fiber queen. So, <laughs> <laughs> I moved on to flying one of my childhood dream motors. I usually didn't really love the fast motor thing like warp nine i still don't really like yeah it's fun but it's just not really my thing and super thunder i like a lot lately but one motor in particular well two had always fascinated me that was the cti n10000 which i did not fly and the cti k2045 v max and specifically the k2045 because every time i've heard one in person that just makes like this ridiculous whooshing sound that no other motor makes no other motors with a similar size grain count or bluish propellant make even a close to similar noise and uh so i flew one in my three inch punisher the k2045 v max and it was every bit as awesome as i wanted it to be and because it's v max it only went like 700 feet higher than matt's because well my punisher is heavy too but uh also you're sacrificing a lot of impulse for the uh, for the excitement, the sound. but it was worth it. And I believe Taylor, you said something to me right after it flew. <laughs> what did it, what did I say? <laughs> you said that perhaps I might be right because the <laughs> noise that it makes <laughs> is not quite attainable with the Aerotech K twenty fifty Super Thunder. That yes, that is correct. <laughs> it's so good, and it sucks because now I want more of them. It's not even just a matter of it's hard to get CTI motors right now. It's a matter of the fact that VMAX propellant is what kind of caused CTI's fire and hasn't. I shouldn't say kind of. Isn't that pretty well confirmed? Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's it hasn't been made for a long, long time. So. uh but there's maybe some light at the end of the tunnel there. We'll talk about here, uh, if we've got time, I wanted everybody to talk about some of their favorite stuff they saw fly at Airfest this year. But yeah, so I finally get to check the K2045 off my list. Thank you so much, Amy Howell, for making that happen. Um, we worked out a great deal. She wanted to fly an OG Animal Motor Works Skidmark motor, and I wanted to fly a K2045, and we each happened to have the vice versa of that deal so she's flying a k555 at balls that i'm bringing out and uh yeah super cool i got a really good video of it i was like super i was like i don't even really care if i get the rocket very good uh i just want the noise and it was great because uh our friend preston also flew a three inch punisher on a k2045 so i got two tries so uh yeah <laughs> super excited for y'all to see the videos of that because it was so gnarly so, I think now it might be time to talk about our big rocket flights. Starting, of course, with the one everybody's curious about, the Arcus. <laughs> um, <laughs> we flew our nine-inch diameter double Arcus on a uh, what? I can't remember the batch date. Does anyone remember? It was like 2007, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An Animal Motorworks N2800 skid mark that uh, actually our friend David Reese pointed out that there's Sharpie covering up what said Gates Brothers on the labels. And uh, I don't know. how How's everybody feeling about the Arcus flight? Uh, it was sick. It was sick. It, it, yeah. was, it was healthy. It was healthy, yeah. It was <laughs> refined. It was, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was actually. Nice. It was gnarly. Go ahead, Taylor. Um, uh, it just, it was a good, it, it kind of made the weekend in a way yeah. for me. Yeah. It was a savior of sorts, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but 
what I am most ecstatic about, not only that we got to fly an N2800 skid mark, um, and it sounded phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The initial takeoff, there was more (laughs) titanium than there was black smoke. Could have been our decision to use copper thermite to light it. Um, But we happened to have an end motor sized copper thermite igniter ready to go, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But above all else, ladies and gentlemen, I am so, so stoked to announce that there is in its entirety onboard footage from the Arcus, and it is so, so sick, dude. Every time I fly one of those GoPros and I get it, right and the footage is there i'm like i need to order like 15 of these because these are out of production (laughs) and this is perfection for onboard video for a large rocket my favorite thing is how good the sound is yeah it doesn't make any sense because of like the 3d printed housing you don't get a ton of wind noise so you don't hear the motor a lot but especially it's prominent on the iris video from ldrs at bonneville solve that's the fin whistle Mm-hmm. is crazy um also the onboard footage gave us some great insight as to uh the one <laughs> downside to, to the Argus flight uh the animal motorworks well, n2800 oh go ahead well me and Braden are always a big fan of the uh old animal motorworks motors that have the full diameter smoke grain just smoking it up forever it's, after which the is motor sick. burns out a lot of times yeah, on the way down too yeah yep. uh <laughs> and so we were exci- super excited about that until <laughs> and so it's really interesting too if you watch the ground video that i shot you see like the titanium is a classic skid mark thing where just titanium is just dumping out the motor after the burn for a really long time but there's a peculiar little glowing at the back of the ride <laughs> the entire ride up and as it turns out it was the smoke grain doing a little more than smoking and uh, just kind of sitting there and lighting the back end of our rocket <laughs> on fire. <laughs> um, um, for anyone that's not aware, we stupidly built this rocket with uh, eight outboard motor tubes, um, <laughs> which we f- completely filled last Airfest and had a <laughs> successful flight with. But this yeah, year we, and can we never decided, fill again. <laughs> <laughs> this year we decided to fly on a single motor, but we did not plug any of the outboard tubes i thought they might get a little you know you expect them to get a little maybe a little little back burn maybe a little char that's no big deal that's to be expected we were not thinking about the smoke grain just cooking them oh my god (laughs) which which is what happened they got completely cooked it's awesome if you watch the onboard footage which is uh if you're on patreon or a youtube channel member is alive now and maybe by the time this goes public, we'll be up, but I'm not entirely sure yet how that's coming together. But right as all the wind stops and the rocket turns over Apogee, it's just on fire. The rocket is on fire. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, that makes sense. We're like, wow, it really cooked it, huh? And we watched the video. We're like, oh, well, yeah, that'll do it. The yeah, campfire so the fire foot- on the back of the rocket. <laughs> the footage that we normally would have been like, oh, that's so sick. Look at all that big flame from the smoke grain. We were like, oh, it's our <laughs> rocket actually yeah. on fire. <laughs> yeah. It kind of hurts to watch. It's yeah. not just pumping a little flame out the back. No, that wood centering ring and all those cardboard tubes were actually burning. Um, it is straight charcoal back there, in fact. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but Taylor I also. Plan. I have oh, a plan to fix it. I do, yes. Well, you want to explain? <laughs> no, not right now. Oh, okay. he, he wants to fix it. Okay. That reminds me, what happened to the nose cone video going out before Airfest? <laughs> well, I did, I ran out of time. Yeah. So it's coming out soon, though, right? Yes. All right. Well, subscribe to the Rocket Channel and cross your fingers. But uh, and and. Uh, you know, I, spoiler, the nose cone did not break in half. So yeah. maybe all the hours I spent on it was worth it. That is true. And actually, um, there was another interesting thing Taylor said that uh, he pointed out. 
Um, when we built the 12 inch Punisher, we were trying to cut costs wherever we could. And we ended up using cardboard plotter tubes for the outboards on the 75s. <laughs> and when we were building the Arcus, I was like, okay, well, we can't do that again. Cause we had to like fiberglass some of them to make it all work. And I was like, obviously we should just do phenolic because it's 54 and 38 and it's going to be cheap. And this rocket costs a fifth as much as you spent on the Punisher. And Taylor went, no. Oh no, I'm not so sure. <laughs> My grandpa just gave me this big box of random cardboard tubes. <laughs> Incidentally, that are quite flammable. <laughs> so honestly true. though, he did say that he thinks Phenolic would have survived, but I don't I don't think it would have been much better. You, the thirty eight survived. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot those. And are they were phenolic. <laughs> Dang, we should have used that 54 phenolic tube that I bought specifically for the Argus that's still in my garage, <laughs> having had done nothing for this past year. If we had spent $40. <laughs> we no, no, no. I, I bought a tube for 5 bucks, so we would have only had to spend 20 on one more. $25 yeah. would have. But well, who? It wouldn't have made a difference if we didn't cook it with this the big smoke grain. <laughs> Yeah, we also could have done a, a full diameter. We made a, a retainer out of some G10. Really, Taylor made it. I just supplied the fin. Uh, I guess that requires more explaining. I had a large fin sitting around. It's like, yeah, you know, we made it out of fiberglass, so I gave him the fin. Is not <laughs> the typical process. Uh, but I had a big 316G10 fin kicking around, so we cut it out of that. And, uh, yeah, if we had maybe made it the full diameter, uh, it it probably would have shielded the tubes, but almost for sure. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hindsight is 2020 and you never really expect your rocket to catch on fire mid flight. And we didn't notice for a while that me and pasta were like, Oh man, the sitter ring got kind of cooked. And then I stuck my finger and he's like, man, the tubes are kind of cooked too. And I was like, nah, not that bad. And then we noticed that, <laughs> One of the tubes, one of the motor tubes is burned completely through. So oh, you're like, oh, man. I'm touching the inside of the airframe. That's not yeah. right. And like eight inches up in the motor tube. <laughs> oh, damn. Dude, it was properly on fire. Yeah. Oh, what a travesty. But not as much of a travesty as we could have had on our hands. It is time, friends, to talk about. The twelve inch Punisher. So da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> again, we want to put together a huge thank you package for everybody who bought merch and uh, those who sponsored the rocket. There's a few stickers and uh, Chris Thorsheim, RocketryNerd dot com bought an entire fin face and the biggest of shout outs to Wildman Rocketry, Tim and Jackie for somehow managing to put three L850s and three M1297s in our hands during these trying times with very recent batch dates. Like, they uh, they made this all happen just so we could have a chance to fly this rocket. So we prepped everything, and uh, Postart and I grabbed the fin can to load it in the van. This is actually as we are loading it in the van to take the pad. And I felt a crack inside the... Uh, the airframe tube on the fin can i was like eh, that doesn't seem phenomenal so i pointed it out to taylor and taylor you want to tell the fine folks what you found <laughs> um so we never really looked over the i mean we we looked over all the upper part of the rocket very thoroughly but the booster just was so solid that we never i noticed a mark on the inside, right by one of the shear pin holes. And I was like, that's where the shear pin just kind of drug uh, from the last flight. And I I really wonder, I don't know. I didn't notice anything in, whenever we had looked at it. So I don't know if this is something that has happened in transport or what. But um, Braden says, you know, Taylor, it's cracked. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's just shear pin mark. And I look at it, and it is cracked basically the length of where the coupler would be all the way through the phenolic to the glass. Right up to the fiberglass layer. Yeah. And all the way down. Yeah. So a full foot long crack 
to the fiberglass layer. If there wasn't and, glass, the tube would be split open. Yeah. And it was like, there was really no discussion. It was just, we can't fly it. <laughs> and we all agreed uh, without really any discussion that it can't fly. Um, um, which sucks, but we almost did fly it. <laughs> right. And there's a few things that are worth noting here because a lot of people uh, were quick to be like, well, you know, just go to the hardware store, get some of this stuff and fix her up. There's a few things I like to point out. One, <laughs> um, Dan Michael was out at the pad when we put the Arcus out and made a great point. And he said, everybody's wanting you to do that because it's not their effing rocket, <laughs> which is a phenomenal <laughs> point to throw out. Uh, so we appreciate that insight dan because yeah it's real easy to root for people that throw their expensive stuff in the sky when it's not yours um so that brings me to a couple other things i wanted to remind everybody a tube is probably going to be what 180 bucks something like that yeah uh the upper section of that rocket by itself with all the recovery gear and it probably weighs 45 pounds or so right maybe more oh, no, it's 20, lot. like 60 yeah, more, more. If we're pushed, this Pro- rocket probably, was supposed to go 80? Yeah, it might weigh 80 pounds. This rocket was supposed to go Mach 1. It was a 200-pound rocket. It was supposed to go Mach 1 with 80 pounds. Any amount of lateral G-force against that crack means that thing is folding in half. And uh, so I pulled up a, a wild man cart for us. The hardware that was in that <laughs> rocket would be 3000 <laughs> nine hundred dollars to replace three three thousand nine hundred (laughs) dollars for just the rocket motor hardware not any of the propellant not for the rocket that you remember there was a great flight um well not great but an unfortunate flight but (laughs) it's a great demo of what we would have seen a full-scale whack corporal uh, came apart and you know what happens when a 12 inch rocket that weighs 200 pounds folds in half while it's going supersonic you get it to ex- spend a few <laughs> go oh yeah go oh, ahead. good it basically explodes <laughs> you get confetti. to spend hours picking up ferociously expensive confetti so the 150 to 200 dollar tube it could be a 500 dollar tube it sounds a whole lot better to us than uh any of that so yes we appreciate everybody who bought the merch and uh as someone was quick to point out in the discord uh ed taylor and i realized on site we're dude we're never putting motors or launches on shirts again we just can't do it (laughs) yeah so he's like it kind of makes the merch pointless huh i was like yeah yeah i know i also kind of almost feel like the punisher shouldn't fly at actual air fest like it, it's cursed yeah it needs to be cloudburst it, we're, yeah seems like it <laughs> yeah it's uh but anyway just, i know just, just plan ahead for for a cloudburst flight in the future i'm being facetious here i know a lot of people most people are going to understand why we pulled the plug on that one but yeah there was a couple holdouts that were really about it and i was like nah man that's we can just get a new tube and take it to midwest power uh, Wild Man Tim was excited about the prospect of it going to Midwest Power as well. So that <laughs> is currently our plan. The 12-inch Punisher's flight will now take place at Midwest Power, which I would argue is kind of cool because we're taking a massive, massive rocket and we're like going to be kind of baiting the waiver a little bit there. Yeah. Which is really crazy. Yeah. Hopefully the weather is good and hopefully there's not too much corn. Mm. But yeah. it would make a good <laughs> YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what what, what Dude, what's no the kidding. launch site like there? It's cornfields. Okay. Yeah, it's I mean it wasn't what I might call pleasant to get the V2 out of there, but uh I'm sure the it's V2 not... is going to feel like an S is alpha compared to <laughs> Hall of the Punisher out. We we might need a posse to go get it. Mm. So if you're coming to Midwest Power, free <laughs> stickers for anybody that wants to help us get that thing out of wherever it goes. Maybe it'll we land where even... your uh, your fusion landed, Taylor. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> that actually wasn't a bad place to land at. It's just that 
we I don't know that we were some problems tracking the process. There was the waterway <laughs> we had to cross. There was that, yes. That was not good. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I was uh, just over but having you... fun talking to people <laughs> and eating fried pork sandwiches. They but were having you... the adventure of their lives. Can you imagine <laughs> the 200-pound rocket landing in standing corn? Hopefully it's all harvested, but there's always that chance. Hey, how about we stop talking about that? And anyway, it <laughs> later, right? It, it it being later in the season, maybe that'll be yeah, well, that, they pushed the launch back like two weeks f- to help with that. So, mm-hmm. but there is some bright sides here. Ones that we don't have to lose five grand worth of rocket and hardware to not noticing a crack. I'm very happy we noticed it. Yeah. Um, and the other bright side is that Matt now is going to experience his first Midwest power. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I, I, a couple years ago, I think we were planning on doing the mini Midwest power, but then I came down with COVID and had to scratch that. But so I'm yeah, really excited. Yeah, he was, he was like a load of barnacles. In, <laughs> it was a load that was of barnacles. In Matt's uh, demon era. Yeah. He was, super, oh, yeah. he was super stoked on going to a new launch site, and then we yeah. canceled it. And that's when he's like, well, what other launch can we go to? I got to fly it. And yeah. so we went to a super, super 105-degree Argonia fun fly. Yeah, nice. Which was pretty cool. I liked being, you know, it was it, fun. Yeah. It felt like we were way close to it, and that's, I think, that's the one where the your camera, your GoPro, fell over as it's going up. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, that's a cool there video. One of the five videos Taylor's posted on his YouTube channel. Actually, <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> You're welcome, Taylor. Um. Okay. Well, while we got a little bit of time, do you guys want to touch on any cool flights you saw at Airfest? Because I have one that I would like to point out. Um, and this is a direct plea to one jay holcomb if you are watching or amy is probably listening i know amy is good friends with jay if anybody else wants to put in a good word for jay holcomb he flew uh cory yeah oh yeah shout out cory again and amy again for putting on an awesome launch definitely he flew a perfect one-to-one replica of the cti 025000 v max Mr. Holcomb, I want one, please. (laughs) If we can arrange that, that would be phenomenal. And it was so unbelievably gnarly. The flame was like 30 feet long. It was so good. It drag separated super hard, unfortunately. But I got a great video of it. It I'll take an N10,000 clone. Yeah, let's go. Shoot requests out. Five inch Punisher, N10,000. There was what a, were the cons there were some C Star clones out there too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wouldn't mind an M fifty eight hundred clone. What, what wasn't there some Cosden clones out there? Yeah, I, I believe, believe two the of them motor back to back. That uh no, those were CTI. Oh, okay. The C Stars. Well, there was no, a there third was one. also there was also there was also maybe the day before back to back caused in fast clones i was oh, recovering was my intimidator i think i don't i didn't could never hear yeah. who was doing that because they but they, they sounded that, awesome yeah our friends at lock precision flew the 12 inch warlock they called the warlord full of t-shirts and uh yeah dude that was so cool actually the all the t-shirts yeah. and they were like yeah you get to keep the parachute and the nomex protector with the shoe and i was like okay well <laughs> the really shirt now i don't want to go get one <laughs> um but they flew that on uh yeah there was a big pile of Nomex protectors that the lost and found. So I was wondering if people just brought them back. Oh, interesting. Mm. I guess I'm thinking of two different flights though, because they flew that at the end of the day. The one where we were driving back after we picked the Arcus up that I believe was a cause. And fast I think that was the Warlock. Was, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That was the, Oh, that was the 12 inch one. The t-shirt yeah. one was the like OG OG Warlock that they built an upper section for. Yeah. That was a seven and a half inch one. Right, right, right. But uh, I think they said Eric Kamberg made the motor and it looked and sounded like a Cosin motor. Uh, dude, the Cosin motors, the fast propellant just has a, kind of a gnarly scream too. My mm-hmm. dad flew that M2240. It was so sick. Yeah, I didn't understand what you were talking about and, um, until I saw that. Yeah, it goes kind of, and forgive me, audience. Uh, it's like, ah! <laughs> when it takes off. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, Pastart match. Yeah. Um, well, 
I think one flight that I wanted to see that I missed out on, which I think could have been cool, was the Cloudbuster Drag Race, I think it was. Wasn't that? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, to me, that seemed like a classic, uh, I yeah, don't know, it was Argonia awesome. thing. Should have been yeah. there. <laughs> when is it? Oh, it's right now. <laughs> it was, they all launched, and I was like, whoa, that's a throwback. Now it was like, what? Was like a Cloudbuster Drag Race. As the rockets are in the air, he's like, when's that? I was like, just now. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the parachutes are coming out. <laughs> when's yeah. that happening? Not well, it just all. did. Uh, I need oh, get, yeah. I need to get faster. Start. You at, know whose rocket um, that was? <laughs> whose was it? It was Bob's. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, Pop yeah. Starts, calls throwing his... shade at Bob. I'm not. I'm not. Well, I love Bob. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of his thing sick. To, to bring the Cloudbuster in ballistic. That's why he calls it Smashing Pumpkins. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It'll be back, I'm sure. Well, it's just he had he had it happen. I don't know. Was that not couple, the carbon fiber times? one that he flew this time, though? Because he I had a carbon, a carbon fiber, fiber one. Room. Yeah, I think at LDRS oh. 40, he had it out there. Well, he I keeps think it was it. somebody else's Cloudbuster that he inherited after they passed away, if I remember that story correctly. I think... Oh, uh, I think yeah. That sounds right. An- another launch that I really liked was Dan Michelson's three-quarter scale Patriot. That was awesome. <laughs> Dan, Dan Michael. Michael. <laughs> Dang it. I get them all mixed up. <laughs> it was... Dude, it crawled off the path. It yeah, was it awesome did. looking. He said it went like 7,000 feet. It really worked for it I there was, was like, a lot yeah, of impulse it yeah pushing. it just took its time yeah. a big heavy rocket but Postar got some really cool pictures shout out rocketrypicks.com where you can see because it kind of cooks on the pad for a second like a mm. like a huge real rocket yeah it so there's just very... like this huge cloud of smoke with like yeah. glowing orange coming out of it before it took off super cool shots yeah that you can buy said... prints of at rocketrypicks.com yeah. i ran into dan at the um, food vendor and talked to him for a little mm. bit and he's like it's it was different it was cool this time because uh the rocket was closer to the ground so normally he flies off big trailer pads out east where the rocket's higher off oh, the yeah. ground so that's what caused that cool flashback like it mm. looks like it's just grinding on the ground before it yeah. moves and the smoke's all around it Pretty <laughs> sick. it was so sick yeah that was yeah. really awesome pause heart any favorites uh, to discuss? Yeah, every single one of Preston's Sparky loads. True, dude. They're so, so good. Yeah, I told Preston, I was like, if I'm going to be honest with myself, I think the motor that you made for Adrian was a little bit better than our actual Animal Motor Works Skidmark end motor. Yeah. You hate to have to own it, but... Preston has the Sparky dialed. And also a special thank you to Preston Noble for loaning us his 9817.5 AMW case. Um, I need all of you guys to go to topflightrecovery.com and order some parachutes. But for those that don't know, Preston owns and manufactures top flight parachutes. So uh, help those out who help us out. Go to Top Flight Recovery, which incidentally you can also buy from wildmanrocketry.com, who also helped us out. And uh, a big shout out, as usual, to our friends at Lock Precision Public Missiles, who have always helped us out and are about to again because the Punisher needs <laughs> a new piece of 12 inch airframe. Um, yeah, support those who support the anti gravity group, please. Oh, dude, another. I have not had really any interest in purchasing a 985120 case, but I got to watch an L2500 from the 50s pads, and I was like, uh-oh, I want that Yeah, now. <laughs> it, It's so good. It, it, it so feel, hard. It feels like it's breaking the rules. Um, it really does. <laughs> it was so... Dude, 98 millimeter Super Thunder from L distance just goes way too hard. I want you should put one in this. Oh no, uh, in the Nike smoke when it's done. You imagine? Oh, oh that'd be sick. <laughs> Huge Nike smoke from the 50s pads. Yeah, dude. It will go that would crazy. Be sick. I really what? want to put one in my V2 now, but first I have to fix it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, that would be a perfect motor for the V2, especially at Lucerne. Just give yeah. it a deal. 
Just like you know, <laughs> oh the M twenty two forty five and uh, the M twenty two forty. We need. They all sound, sound the same quick. coming from me, right? But if you you got to hear them independently to understand, it's a little bit different. That's why V Max is better. Any motor that screams, I'm into. <laughs> Dude, you remember some L eight fifties with the Medusa nozzle? Hit, Dude, I heard like, one this yeah, week. Yeah, me weekend. too. My dad flew one that was so gnarly. It was sick. Can you give us a demo of what that sounded like? <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> there's something like that <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> Dude, the people as soon as you said, "Can you give us a demo?" Some people listening were just like, "No, God, don't, <laughs> please, <laughs> no more." I'm cringing internally. Oh, uh, how about Fred Traverney with the three stage? Dude, so sick. I'm yeah. sad he didn't get to fly American Karma the six yeah. stage, but I'm I'm sure he'll be back again next year. I want to know yeah. how far out his went. Shane talked to him, didn't you? Uh yeah, it was how? it was a few miles away. Yeah, I was gonna say it looked like it was going east pretty good. Yeah. Luckily, Argonia's got a crazy waiver cylinder, eight nautical mile radius. Oh, nice. Wow, that's so awesome. You can get away with a little bit of uh, I Honestly, I thought it wasn't going to light. I thought the off axis mm-hmm. was going to yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. But it let it rip, and it, my God, <laughs> did it rip. <laughs> there was another what? one that went west. I'm trying to remember uh which one that was I'll there was an, or an, an n1000 mean, oh yeah, yeah that might have been it it would i was watching my video and it just yeah went went way took off it just oh wait no there was, like, was, there was a no the m685 oh that went that's right way west yeah <laughs> yeah there was an n1000 that coned super hard and it started yeah. spinning and i was like oh god that motor burns for so long <laughs> it held together though so props to whoever built that rocket that thing was built like a tank because hmm. the n1000 is not as gentle as some yeah. i thought i was gonna youtubers fold, like, think how it is. early it started coning yeah we just took but, it uh, all right, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Again, thank you to everybody who helped us out with trying to bring the Punisher and Arcus flights together at AirFest 30. Uh, 50% success rate there, huh? It's all right. We'll bring it home next time. Anybody have anything else to say? It was a fun um, time. And, and it yeah, was great do to, it again. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. Great, great to see everybody there, too. It was definitely a fun time. And special shout out from me and Macho Matt to Taylor and Postar for basically single handedly prepping both of those rockets to fly. <laughs> yeah, we were too busy doing other important things. Yeah. Oh yeah, hey, I forgot it's... to talk about my log precision. Yeah. We'll just talk about it real quick. I I the boys from Log Precision, if you watched our episode where we talked to them, you'll know that they've been a cover band for a long long time they're very professional at what they do and they asked me to play a song with them i picked a song that has like a weird it's still in 4-4 but it's a little bit funky which was a bad call i did uh times like these by foo fighters and uh let me tell you that's not a song you want to come into (laughs) having never played with these people ever before and uh i couldn't hear anything so i was just like staring at other people's hands on guitars and trying to figure out where we were. And, uh, yeah, it was rough. I, I got a little bit back in the pocket towards the end, but my God, that, uh, I was so excited to play music again. And now I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm good on that for now. Uh, <laughs> it was good, Braden. It was good for, we all just had fun. Sell some of the music I, gear, fund a few more end motors and, uh, call it a day <laughs> on the old music dreams. Just let AI handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which, uh, oh, no. my name is Braden Carlson. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Anti-Gravity Group Podcast. You can find me right here. That's Matt's line. <laughs> on Rocket Vlogs on YouTube. You can follow me on Instagram and add me on Snapchat at BB1011. If you would, please follow me on TikTok at Braden Carlson 6 we're getting close to 10,000 followers over there, and uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, my name is Taylor, and you can find me right here. <laughs> no, oh, wait. No, that's Matt also. Um, <laughs> go to the Rocket channel. I have a video that's not uploaded Allegedly. yet. Allegedly. Uh, oh, whoa. <laughs> can we get a I video spit- of you editing video? No, absolutely oh. not. But I took the time to film the whole process of me 
uh, and Matt a little bit, rebuilding the Arcus nose cone. And it all worked out. So um, keep your eyes peeled in the next week. It will be up. I have a limited amount of time before it balls, but I I need to not lose that video because I actually tried to film it. Uh, My name is Shane or Postart. You can find me right here. (laughs) Nope, still Matt's line. Uh, (laughs) You can find me online at hprtools.com and rocketrypicks.com. I have a bunch of pictures from Airfest. I spent a good amount of money renting a lens. Please, if I got your rocket, go buy pictures. It really helps me out. You can also find me on YouTube at Postart Propulsions. There are definitely some awesome pictures. Um, and my name is Macho Matt. And yeah, you can find me right here. Wow. We are the Anti Gravity Group. This is the Anti Gravity Group podcast. And we will see you all next time. Load up the professional masterpiece, you can bet on that A launch and a chat with them is guaranteed to be a blast It's the Anti-Gravity Group Podcast